the Dallas Cowgirls. I mean, Dallas Cowboys yeah, versus so. the Atlanta. We gonna be awful again this year, Falcons. Um, what you doing, shots in the beginning of go to video? What are you doing? Yeah, because both of them deserve it. The Cowboys and the Falcons deserve their shots. Um, Russell Wilson's man. Russell Wilson is one of the most underrated quarterbacks in the NFL. You might have seen Bill Belichick. No, I seen that, but that, I saw what he did to me Sunday. <laughs> Thirty-one or thirty-five. The boy had the same amount of incompletion as he had touchdown. People. He had a good game. He had less completions. And more touchdowns in one game than I had good days in my life. All right, stop lying. <laughs> Serious business. Right, he was carving it. us up, man. And you know what? He was doing this, and the Atlanta Falcon offense, defensive front was playing well. Just the back end wasn't playing yeah, well. Yeah, they was playing well. Tack was good. Garrett was good. Fowler got some pressure. But he carved the back end up. Our linebackers... Two linebackers didn't play well. You know, Deion Jones is going to play well every game. Mm -hmm. But he was carving us up badly. And the Falcon offensive line, going into that game, that's what I said. How is the Falcon offensive line that's going to perform? If you could tell me that, then I can tell you who will win the game. If Falcon offensive line is bad, then the Falcon is going to lose. And that's what it was. And it just wasn't that the Falcon offensive line was bad. It was inconsistent. Sometime it would be good, and then sometime it would be bad. And I still say today that the Falcon got a fire Dan Quinn. Like if they have a really, really bad like because I think the reason why we haven't been good since Shanahan left. And that has shown me that no Shanahan was the reason why we went to the Super Bowl. It wasn't Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn last year took over the defense. Defense fell. They had to bring in Morris. The defense picked up. When you have a head coach, it has to be something that he specializes in. Well, see, no, it, but it's say. nothing. It's nothing that Dan Quinn specializes in. Not defense. Not special team. Not offense. Not so what does he specialize in? Calls. Challenges and calls? Calling timeouts? Yeah. That ain't good enough for a head coach in this league. Hey, man. It's just not good enough. It's time for him to go. <laughs> Pack your bags. But that's the reason why I thought that he, he didn't get fired. Uh, because that y'all did start to play better later on in the season. So, like, if that continued to happen where y'all start out bad and then finish strong at the end, he might not get fired. They might just say, hey, we still need some more weapons and he's doing a good job. And at the start of the game, I thought – Gurley ran well. He had nine carries for 51 yards in the first half of the game, but Yo, um, 14 carries for 50 something. Yeah, because we got down. Yeah. But so I thought he played well, but the offensive line was just consistent. I mean, inconsistent. Sorry, people. And we missed Sheffield because man, you know, with Terrell, he's a rookie, but Oliver is not good, people. He's not good. And a lot of us Falcon fans out there, we knew that when we first drafted him. And we were like, oh, what did, what, do they, what are they doing drafting him? And we have been proven right. He's not good, man. It was on the play where he got beat by DK Markav. It was a single high safety. So when you have a single high safety, you automatically know that you can't get beat at the line of scrimmage. Because that when you have a deep, one deep safety is optional. He can either come your way or he can come down when you have that. So you got to make sure that you at least stay on your man within the first five, six yards. He get burnt at the line of scrimmage. Easy touchdown. Easy touchdown. And you had so many of those plays on the back end where you just said, wow, this is bad. Ricardo, we, uh, Ricardo Allen... Didn't play well. Had a third and 23. And he had a bad 
pass interference and you uh, you're like look at that and you say you understand that if uh, if a corner make that because you're coming off the line of scrimmage with the receiver and you may not be able to get your eyes turned back around. You're supposed to, but it's a little more difficult for a corner in that situation. But he he was a safety and still didn't get his eye turned around. And so they scored on that and then on the uh, DK Metcalf play, that was a fourth and five. And they went that's when they just saying they ain't got no respect for you. They have no respect for you at that point. So they were excellent. Matt Ryan threw for 450 yards. Julio had a big game. Gage had a big game. Ridley had a big game. But the offensive line has to be better. And we still have the same problem with our running backs coming out the backfield, not blocking. It was like, how many times can Jamal Adams touch Matt Ryan? This was sexual harassment. He was touching all over Matt Ryan. It's like, man, block. So you saying it keep the keep the running the back in and block for the dude, man. You see that offensive line is struggling. You gotta have and you and you think with Matt Ryan, he gotta start calling those audibles at the line of scrimmage to tell the guy, yo, this is the dude. He coming off the edge. Don't go up the middle, cause you seen they running backs running right up the middle, trying to block, and then Adams and other defensive ends and linebackers they was coming from the corner. And they was getting there. So that has to be better. Now on the Dallas Cowboys side, um, again, whole lot of talent. Offense and defense underperform versus the Rams, though. Underperform. Uh, I know everybody was talking about that, that play with Ramsey, but... It's the difference between flopping and selling. He didn't flop. He sold it. He act, the dude actually extended his arm, and he sold it. He didn't hit him in the head. He had him in the shoulder, and he sold it, and, and, and they threw the flag, and it was a call. And people like, yo, man, in that incident, I don't like to see them uh, make those type of calls because I don't want the game to be decided by that. No. Then you saying you want the game to be decided by a penalty. In those instances, I don't care. If it's a foul, call the foul. Because if, if either you, it's going to be called, the game going to end on them doing the right thing, or is it going to end on them and a no he, call? He either way. And, and this is why it's... That egregious, like that New Orleans Saints. Yeah. If it, but for me, though, if someone is altering your progress to stop him from catching the ball, playing defense, then you got to call that. And that's what, and that's why the referee did call it because it was like, no, he would have broke that pass up if he didn't get hit. If he didn't extend his arm, Ramsey would have knocked the ball away. That's why they called the call. Who you got in the game, man? I got... I don't know. I'm taking the Dallas Cowboys. I don't believe in my Falcons. You've been all over the place in this, this topic. Are you trying, trying to stay away from picking against your team, huh? Uh, I don't know who I have in this game because your offensive line is inconsistent and your cornerbacks are inconsistent. But um, I, I'm picking the Falcon, man. I'm, I'm pulling the Steven A. Somehow, some way, the Cowboys will find a way to lose this game. <laughs> Especially if it's close. Now I know it's in Dallas, but yeah, I feel like they'll put up a better showing. Falcon offense, I think they, offensive line, and I think they'll put up a better showing. But I'm picking picking Falcons. Uh, maybe thirty. It's gonna be a bond burner. It's gonna be a heart clincher. Thirty to twenty-eight. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Hit that like button, subscribe. Next game of the week. 